Hello, welcome everyone. Um, today we're going to be talking about Argo CD and Argo rollouts extensions. Um, my name is uh, Leonardo, I go by Leo, and I am a staff software developer at Intuit, and I am one of the maintainers in the Argo CD and Argo rollouts projects. Want to introduce yourself? Sir? Yep. My name is Zach Aller. I'm a senior software engineer at Intuit as well, um, and I am one of the lead maintainers for Argo rollouts. All right. Thank you, Zach. Um, Zach and I, we work in the core Argo team at Intuit, and we share our time between um, maintaining the open source projects and improving the Intuit infrastructure. In this slide, you can have a perspective on the size of our infrastructure and the complexity behind it. Um, in our team, we're constantly asked to keep improving this architecture, this uh, infrastructure, and uh, add new features, improve the user experience. However, um, some of those initiatives are really Intuit specific. And the answer to that, that not only the two of us, but our entire team is uh, related to, is uh, how to um, build uh, an extension uh, points in the two projects that we deal with on a daily basis, so Argo CD and Argo Relots. And with that, I'm gonna pass over to Zach to provide you the agenda for today. So uh, as Leo said, a lot of times you're trying to extend Argo rollouts and Argo CD um, for Intuit specific use cases. Today, we're just gonna go over basically six extension points, three of them from Argo rollouts and three of them from Argo CD. Um, you can see what they are here. We'll kind of go through them as we go. Um, I'm gonna start off with Argo rollouts in the beginning. Um, we'll start off kind of a high level overview of um, what the Argo Rollouts plugin architecture looks like. Uh, Argo Rollouts, uh, as a Kubernetes controller, when it starts up, it knows how to read a particular um, config map. And in that config map, it has information about where to download um, these plugins. So it goes and downloads or copies those plugins to a well-known location within the Rollouts controller. And it starts those plugins up as a child process of the controller. Um, at the heart of Argo Rollouts plugins is they, um, they're basically just a RPC server that the controller then is able to make function calls um, to. Uh, that config map that I talked about looks like this. It has a couple, uh, the same fields in them. Um, all of Argo Rollouts plugins are configured the exact same way. You'll see we have a, a name, which is the name of the plugin, a location, and an optional SHA-256 hash. Um, we support both downloading from HTTPS as well as um, using file locations. If you do use a file location, it's up to the Argo Rollouts uh, admin to basically mount that uh, executable up inside the container. Uh, the first extension point that I'm going to talk about is traffic routers. So for those that aren't familiar, um, Argo Rollouts traffic routers are basically the tool that gets used to actually shift the traffic from the stable to the canary pods. Um, it can be anything from Itzio Mesh to uh, Amazon ALB to Gateway API, et cetera. Um, these plugins are pretty tightly correlated with, um, in your rollout manifest, you, set, you can call like a set wait step, um, which means send, you know, set 20% of the traffic to uh, the canary pods. Um, as a plugin author, to implement one of these uh, plugins, you basically have to implement a Golang interface. Um, there's a couple of function calls that we'll go through here and look at these real quickly. Um, for brevity of the slide, I left out a lot of the arguments and the return signatures uh, just to clean things up. Uh, but one of the, the very first uh, things you have to implement is the init plugin function. And this basically gives you as the plugin author the ability to uh, instantiate clients, long-lived cube client, um, any type of uh, long-lived uh, process that you want in your a uh, plugin that you only want one instance of um, can get initialized there. We have update hash. The Argo rollouts controller will call this when um, the replica set pod hashes change. Basically, a deployment has uh, just been triggered, etc. cetera. Um, you have kind of the, the gist of what the traffic router plugin system is all about, and that's the set wait function. Um, this directly correlates to when Argo rollouts is configuring a particular weight to your canary, it calls this, which then the plugin's job is to go, you know, configure whatever external system is out there uh, to configure the, the correct weight. 
Uh, rollouts also supports header routing and mirror routing. Those are other uh, similar functions to set weight, just with different feature sets. Uh, we have verify weight. This is a pretty interesting um, function to implement. Uh, this generally gets used today for uh, like an Amazon load balancer. Um, when we set the weight of the ALB to 20%, let's say, verify weight periodically gets called to make sure that the ALB is actually configured to that weight before moving on to the next step. Um, there's some interesting use cases that we'll talk about with verify weight a little bit later. Um, and then just some management stuff, some remo remove managed routes, which is for mirroring and header, and then uh, ty type, which just returns a string. Um, how you configure these plugins within your uh, rollout object is you have your traffic routing. Instead of doing some of the built-in stuff like uh, itsio, et cetera, you can just use the plugins field and you see the name there and then basically any config that your plugin um, would require. So why would you want to create a traffic router? Well, there's the, obviously the very simplistic cases you want to add support for Azure load balancer or some other type of service out there that we currently don't support internally. Um, there is also a whole handful of kind of calling them untraditional uses. Uh, Argo rollout supports configuring multiple traffic routers at the same time. Uh, yeah, the weight is off. Okay, we're back. Uh, yeah, okay. So it uh, supports multiple uh, traffic routers at the same time. So you can basically have your normal one that's actually doing traffic and then piggyback and only implement, implement the verify weight function. Not all the functions have to be implemented. Um, and in that you can do things like log-based verification where you query some logging system to make sure that the traffic percentages have been met before going on. You can sync multiple rollouts um, to make sure that multiple rollout steps are both at the same spot, um, calling third-party systems and APIs, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> so that was traffic routers. Uh, one of the other uh, extension points would be analysis runs. So for those that aren't, haven't used rollouts, analysis runs are the feature within rollouts that lets you, uh, that tells the rollouts controller when to abort a rollout. Uh, today, that's generally used. Um, it queries a various metric system. You know, you look for error rates, et cetera, and if your canary has a high error rate, it will abort it. Um, uh, to implement one of these is very similar to tr the traffic routers, just maybe a tiny bit simpler. So we have a net. We have our run function, which is where you would put, um, you know, the meat of what your plugin is doing. Uh, you have your resume, terminate, garbage collect, and type. Those are kind of management-y type plugins. They get used today for the job provider, which is uh, a feature in rollouts that lets an analysis run spin up a Kubernetes job. Um, so you can imagine like garbage collect basically cleans up the old jobs um, and things like that. And various providers, you know, as a plugin author, you can basically use these, uh, these hook points um, as you need. Um, one of the more interesting hook points would be the Git metadata. So a lot of times in your analysis run, uh, run, you'll want to return some form of metadata back to the analysis run um, Kubernetes object. Uh, rollouts will call this function and then you as the plugin author are allowed to return any metadata that you want to save um, in the analysis run template or the analysis run resource. Uh, Today, this gets used as in Prometheus, we render out the Prometheus query. We substitute all the arguments that you have um, passed into your query and give you a nice copy and pasteable uh, version of that. But as a plugin author, obviously, you're free to do what you want. Um, to, to use a plugin provider in your analysis template, you basically do the same thing. You have the name of the plugin and then any particular configuration that your plugin would require. Um, so why would you want to do this? A couple lightweight things, you know, the church stuff, you have some database storage that uh, your metrics live in that aren't currently supported and you want to uh, add support for that. Um, an interesting one that I kind of like would be the Argo, like an Argo workflows plugin. So today the rollout supports spinning up jobs. Jobs are pretty simple. It would be kind of neat to have an Argo rollouts plug, uh, Argo workflows plugin as an analysis provider that would allow you to spin up like a cluster templated workflow um, to do either load testing or 
checking to make sure your canary is okay, et cetera. Um, and there's a whole slew of other uses that you know, people will get creative with. Um, and the last but not the least, uh, this is currently in development, so it's a, not set in stone yet, but it would be uh, the ability to have a step plugin. So within rollouts, you know, you have your rollout and you define um, how, you know, setting 20% of your traffic, pausing, setting 15% of your traffic, continuing. You have all these steps that you define in your rollout. Uh, step plugins uh, give you the ability to have a hook point to run your particular code as one of your steps in your deployment process. Um, so the easiest one yet is you basically, and this could change of course, is you have your init plugin, your run, which runs whatever code you want, um, and you know, is the step done? Um, and that's kind of what the interface is looking like uh, today. Uh, and that's basically how you would use it. Within your rollout step definition, you would you know, call your particular plugin, pass in any type of um, config that you would need for your plugin, um, and then Argo Rollouts would run that as, at that point in time. So there is a whole bunch of interesting use cases uh, for step plugins. These are just some of the kind of top of the head ones that haven't really been fully thought out, but ideas that we've talked about, um, like multi-region traffic control. A lot of traffic providers support, you know, multi-region traffic control and things like that. Um, so you could at the you know, start of your rollout, you could shift all your traffic over to another region, continue your rollout, you know, and then shift traffic, do your validation chest and then shift traffic back and then kind of roll out on the other side. Um, you know, you could gate rollouts, you could make sure that certain conditions or uh, your change management system said that it was okay to, you know, do this deployment. Uh, one of the interesting uh, features that kind of coincides with traffic routers is, uh, the traffic router plugins is uh, traffic router um, have a lot of diverse feature set. And so you might have a plugin that implements like gateway API or some other mesh provider. And you have a very particular step or a feature of that um, traffic router that you need, want to use as one of your steps. Now you can actually create a, a co-plugin for um, that particular feature, whether it's, you know, doing header routing or uh, controlling error rates or retry policies, a feature of that particular traffic router plugin that you implemented before. So they, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, you have feature flag canarying, you know, you could call out uh, third party services to enable features instead of canarying traffic, you know, you could canary features and control that there. Uh, infrastructure validations, check to make sure certain things are in place uh, before, you know, proceeding to the next steps, etc. And there's also uh, this GitHub issue 2685. Uh, people have been um, contributing ideas and feature requests for uh, step plugins. So if you uh, are interested or have ideas, please go and um, add your two cents. Um, I'm now going to, uh, that was a whirlwind tour, by the way, but I'm not going to pass it off to my colleague, Leo, um, and he'll talk about Argo City plugins. Thanks, Zach. Um, all right. So today, like Zach, I selected three extension points in Argo City to present to you today. And the first one I want to talk about is what we call a config management plugin or CMP for short. So uh, config management plugin is, so config, first of all, config management in Argo CD terminology, and this wasn't really uh, uh, defined by Argo CD, but config management is really the task of generating the manifest for your application, right? So in Argo CD, we have the, 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 the feature to allow uh, users to define their own method to generate manifests, right? So uh, Argo CD ships uh, natively with uh, customize and Helm. Um, so why would someone uh, want to write a CMP, CMP plugin? So custom, customize and Helm are not the only two tools to generate manifests. There are plenty of others uh, in the industry. So maybe your company is using one of those two tools. So CMP plugin can be an answer to that if you want to use Argo CD internally. Uh, so if you have uh, specific uh, manifest configs, uh, can, you can also leverage uh, CMP plugins. So uh, for, for example, uh, you can configure 
uh, a Docker container and have Helm inside that container and have some additional logic that uh, the native Helm doesn't provide and you can uh, implement your own. Uh, it really, it's really, really uh, use case specific, okay? So uh, maybe moving forward, I'd like to present to you the, the Argo CD uh, component architecture. And I like to, to show this diagram here because it, it gives you an understanding of where those, uh, those plugins live. So in the case of the CMP, it lives in the repo server. So repo server is the Argo CD component responsible for generating manifests. And you install CMP uh, by adding a sidecar container to the repo server and configuring it in a way that when Argo CD needs to generate manifests for a given application, it will delegate to this um, additional uh, container to generate the manifests. All right, some uh, interesting ideas, and this is something I wanted to bring up. Um, today, Argo CD has a different, uh, different feature called multi-source. So today, the way multi-source works, it allows uh, uh, um, a user, Argo CD user, to define uh, different sources for generating manifests for a given application. The problem is, well, the problem with the reality of multi-source today is that those two uh, sources are independent. So there is an ongoing progress uh, process, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an open PR, to make the multi-source uh, work in a chained manner. And what, is the, what are the use cases that this would unlock is the fact that, for example, you're using a Helm chart in your, in your, uh, in your company, in your infrastructure that doesn't provide specific uh, configurations. Right? Helm chart is really about the Helm chart author to specify um, how that, what, what are the possible configurations that can be defined. But uh, if, if that's the case, though, if the Helm chart doesn't provide you that, you can write uh, a CMP plugin to do this uh, last mile manifest manipulation. All right, so moving forward, uh, the next uh, plugin um, I wanted to uh, speak about today is the AppSet Generator plugin. So different from uh, CMP, AppSet is all about generating Ar Argo CD applications, right? And um, AppSet will automate how Argo CD applications are created. So it already ships today with a big collection of generators, but if, if, if in your case, uh, for some example, um, one of the provided generators does not address your use case, you can implement your own generator. So that's what we call AppSat Generator Plugin. And uh, why would someone uh, want to, 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 to implement the, an AppSat Generator? Is basically to address specific comp uh, companies' needs, right? So if you, if you for example, um, to generate Argo CD applications, you need to call an API in, that is only internal to your company in order to get some data, some labels, or maybe the, the server URL. Uh, you can do so by leveraging the um, application set plugins. Uh, okay, so going back to the same um, component diagram, where does the app set generator plugin lives, uh, it lives in the upset controller. So the way to configure it is by uh, defining a config map that you can reference in your Argo CD, uh, sorry, in your app application set uh, CRD. Oops, let's do the dance again. And hopefully it's gonna come back. Space. All right. Okay, we're back. And uh, yeah, and uh, the way to configure AppSet plugin is as, as I was saying, right? So you define a config map and you reference that uh, config map in your application set CRD and uh, the controller will handle that uh, generator. All right, so the last uh, plugin I wanted to, uh, extension point I wanted to uh, talk today is UI and proxy extension. This particularly I've been involved uh, lately and uh, specifically on the proxy extensions, but uh, oh, that's not good. Sorry about that.
All right. So uh, UI and proxy extension. So what it is? So it's all about uh, improving the Kubernetes resource visualization. Okay. So this is all about the UI extension. So why would someone uh, wants to do that? Well, one of the most powerful uh, features of Argo CD is the is, is the UI that we believe it's, it's the UI. So it, it allows uh, users to have a much more intuitive view on how their applications are behaving in Kubernetes. It's a lot more user friendly and uh, it provides better insights on uh, hidden info in YAML. So if you know Kubernetes a little bit, you know that it has that status field and oftentimes it has uh, uh, valuable information in that particular attribute. So uh, someone can write uh, UI extensions to uh, read those uh, status fields and provide uh, a visual inside Argo CD. So it will, will have an additional tab and I'm going to show a few screenshots that we run in production today. All right. So uh, going back again on the uh, component diagram where the proxy extension lives. So proxy extension is all about the API server. So API server is uh, what serves the UI. And the way to configure UI extensions is specifically mounting a React component on the Argo CD API server. But uh, you don't have to do that manually. We, we ship some uh, Docker uh, images that can be used to, to simplify that installation process. Uh, so let's move on uh, to uh, some screenshots I brought up to you today. So I'm going to present two two extensions that we're running in production today at Intuit. So the first one is the rollout extension. So when users go in Argo CD UI and they, when they click the Argo, uh, sorry, the rollouts resource, uh, they will be uh, able to see a new tab called more to see more information about that particular rollout. So this is what I was mentioning before of providing a more intuitive view instead of looking at the YAML and trying to understand what that particular rollout is behaving, uh, you can have a, a visualization, right? So right now we know right away that this is a canary rollout. It has 23 revisions. It has a few steps and so forth. Um, this is a pure UI extension. And I didn't mention exactly what is the difference because I wanted to reach this slide first. So this is uh, a view of the matrix extension that we are also um, using in production and into it in all our clusters and all Argo City, uh, all Intuit applications. And this, uh, this is a special type of extension because it leverages this, this functionality that we call proxy extension. So imagine that for, uh, for UI extensions, it has full, full access of the native, um, Argo CD API. But if you want to build an extension that doesn't, doesn't necessarily, uh, um, can be addressed just by reaching the Argo CD API, you can uh, use proxy extension. And the matrix extension is a, is a very good example on that. So here we have a backend service running in every single cluster at Intuit that serves Prometheus uh, metrics extracted from Prometheus to uh, through Argo CD API. Okay, so I don't have uh, a lot of time today to there, there's a lot into this, and uh, today we don't we don't have uh, uh, much time left. And if you want uh, to know more about UI and proxy extensions, you are invited to join our talk at KubeCon, where, where uh, Remington and I will do a deep dive on specifically on UI and proxy extensions and show you how that looks behind the scenes. All right, and. That's it for your, our talk. Thank you very much. This uh, QR code has the, all the links related to this talk, not only uh, one specific link. So it will open a, a, a page where you can find everything related. And the last one is to provide feedback. If you want uh, to provide feedback, feel free to do so. And uh, we can, uh, we have a few, one minute for Q and A. If someone wants to ask a question, if not, we're we're going to be uh, available uh, for a chatting person as well. Thanks, everybody.